Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Duane, KO4VNX. Now, he's got this uh, topic that he's interested in. Oh, also just thought of a topic that I've never seen anyone cover thoroughly. And that topic is wire gauge. In other words, how thick the wire is. What gauge for what level of power transmitted? I've seen a lot of people take very general wags at the answer, but it always sounds like they are guessing. Well, first of all, let's recognize point number one. What makes a wire heat up is not the voltage, but the current. Okay, and remember it's equals IR, so E over I equals R, and we can do some things with that. Let's take as an example a 100 watt transmitter. And there's a cable that goes out to an antenna. Okay, and we're at 100 watts. Okay, now we've got this thing going on here and we want to know how much current is in this. Okay, now the ratio between the voltage and the current, E over I equals Z. That's the impedance here, so it is 50, 50 ohms, okay? Now, so you've got the voltage over the current, and we want to find out what the current is. Power is equal to, now let's find out what E is, equals I R, okay, times I equals I squared R. Okay, so the power is I squared R. So the power is 100 watts. I squared equals, we can move this to the other side, divided by 50. 2 equals I squared. So therefore, I equals the square root of 2, which is 1.417 amps. Okay, so this is your 100 watt radio. If you were to go up to a higher wattage radio, you'd have to get something a little stronger. Now we introduce a new term called ampacity. It means the current carrying capacity of a piece of wire in amps, because again, the voltage is presumably taken care of by the coax. You can run a thousand watts through RG8X, and you don't have to, but there's a point there where the, the conductor will start to get warm, and that's called the ampacity. Now, for general household use, the ampacity of 14 gauge wire, 14 GAU, hard to see there, 14 gauge wire, is about 15 amps and 12 gauge wire is that's supposed to be one two gauge is 20 about 20 amps 10 gauge is about 30 amps these are the max currents that you will put through those wires now in an aircraft this all jumps up one but then they've got very short runs and a slight bit of heating doesn't matter and this is offset by the reduction in weight uh, from the copper. I was quite surprised that the little wires I was working with could carry so much. But here we're talking about one and a half amps, okay, of power. You could go 18, even 20 gauge wire and get that up there just fine. Standard electrical tables, the ampacity of various wires from 16 to 32 generally ranges from around 18 amps for 16 AWG to less than 1 amp for 32 AWG. Okay, so here is what we've got. We're looking to carry 2 amps of current. You could do this with number 26 wire if you really wanted to live on the edge. I'd go up here to 22 five amps and you'll be doing enough. Let me tell you that your coax is a lot better than that. Now, according to the tables that I found at DX Engineering, RG8X, which is a very, very common, highly used cable, I like it a lot myself, 
It has a cable at the center that's 16 AWG, 16 American wire gauge, which we have looked at a previous table and found that that can handle up to 15 amps. Okay, so 15 amps compared to 1.1414 uh, amps, about 1.5 amps, you've got no problem. You're not going to get heating in the cable. Now, if you go up to 1,000 watts, then you go up by something more. Uh, one thing you have to remember about RG8X, it's primarily for HF. It has a lot of loss at VHF and UHF, and you might want to look at a different conductor like LMR400 or something like that. So the bottom line on this is uh, what gauge for what level of power transmitted. You can take the math that I showed you here and work your way to that for any level of power that you want. Now, for my amplifier, uh, when I turn that on, I'm using essentially LMR400 uh, or equivalent RG213 out to whatever antenna I'm talking to. And that'll go up to 1,000 watts easily, 1,500 watts easily. But uh, I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. The problem will be heating in the coax if you do get close to the coax limit. Coax can melt, which can cause the two conductors to short together, which off times will trigger, <laughs> off times, every time, trigger the SWR protection in the amplifier. Okay, so I hope that helps. You're well within tolerance, even on RG8X cable at 100 watts. And if you want to go up from there, you can go through these equations that I laid out and find the answer. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.